Um, I want to talk for a minute about Peter Renaday, who you just heard doing the bear from Country Bear Jamboree, and I'm with you. They should bring it back. We miss it here. It's in Florida. It's still in Florida, uh, so it does play. But um, Peter, can you tell me? Because do we have a microphone over here? Hey, someone, give me a mic. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think it's on. Uh, oh, so, Peter, you are the one person on the panel who has actually met Walt Disney. Could you just tell me? Because I'm the oldest person. Well, still, <laughs> you started. You started. Tell us what year you started with the company. I started uh, in 1959. Uh, <laughs> it was a very good year, and Walt was there, you know, for seven years while I was still working there, and uh, it was a different atmosphere, completely. Uh, we worked, I was in the art props department and they'd send us to Disneyland to do touch-up paint work and do signs and this was long before I got into the voiceover end of things. But uh, I was saying to my niece coming over here, yeah, we used to say, oh, we better get started. We better leave about 9.30 when there's no traffic to get to Disneyland. <laughs> Doesn't apply anymore, does it? <laughs> But it was, uh, it was exciting being there. In fact, strangely enough, ironically enough, the first person that I saw the day I was hired, I thought, well, someday I may actually get to see Walt Disney. And I walked into the animation building and there he was coming out. And I'd been told, oh, we call him Walt. And I thought, yeah, I can't do that. I, I said, good morning. And he said, oh. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> It was, it was something special in those days, yeah. Oh, that's been, can you tell me, how did you get the job on Country Bear? How did that come about? Country Bear? Well, uh, <laughs> I was part of a group at the studio called the Disney Players. And we did one play in the theater every year with the proceeds going to the John Tracy Clinic, which was one of Walt's favorite charities. And uh, they saw me in the plays and somebody got the idea, oh, I guess we could use this guy for something here and there. And they started doing little voiceover things for me, little narration jobs, uh, then some for the park. Uh, I did Mark Twain for the Mark Twain boat, and uh, what else? Well, Country Bear, of course. Later on, Lincoln <coughs> for the Hall of Presidents. But the voiceover things kept coming in, and uh, finally I decided, wait a minute, I can make a living doing this, can I? <laughs> so that's how it got started, with the Disney players. Yeah. Wow, and fantastic. Thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. Now, EJ, EJ Ward, right next to Peter over there. Um, I have to tell you that, you know, when I was going through the files and finding out how many different attractions these people have been on, every other file was B.J. Ward, B.J. Ward, B.J. Ward, B.J. Ward. B.J., you've done a lot of attractions, and I was so thrilled to bring the, the, the Burroughs Rabbit from Splash Mountain. I mean, that's like, to me, very, very Disney, and I was so thrilled that that's you. Yeah, I, I had never heard any of that, because when you do recording sessions, you just do it. They don't play it back for you. So. I know I did some singing possums you did and right, rabbits possums. and a couple of other things. Yeah, you were also at Kitchen Cabaret for Epcot, I and mean, you've done oh, a lot right. of singings. The, how did you get involved with working for Disney to start with? I think I just had an audition many years ago when I first started, and I just had a, a very high, light voice. My voice was kind of like, hi, welcome to Denny's. That was kind of where my voice was pitched. So I only did one thing, hi, welcome to Denny's. And they had me read for something, and it was sort of, Hi, welcome to the Magic Kingdom. And it was that smiley, nice Disney sound. And I, I'd worked for several of the composers, uh, the Sherman Brothers, who wrote It's a Small World, and the Carousel of Progress thing I'd sung for them. And um, I had sung with George Wilkins, who wrote a lot of things here. And then I did some singing for Euro Disney in French, which was, my apologies to the French people. <laughs> right now. And by the way, I have to tell you, she has got an enormously powerfully wonderful voice. You did stand-up opera, which was your one-woman show for a long time. The, the thing about working for us is that, obviously, it, that is not the thing you do all the time. No, but that's what I like about working with voiceover people, because we all kind of come from different 
walks of the business. Some people come from radio, some people uh, come from improv, some are actors, some right. um, and some people have other jobs like they're biologists and I mean I just find it's an interesting group of people. Right. Yeah. Um, well, we well are I've always been very happy to be called in to do anything. <laughs> well, we're, we're delighted to have you. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming today. to BJ is Stephen Stanton, whose audio did not work. <laughs> Sorry about that, Stephen. I know. Imagine ears. I don't know. I didn't do it on purpose. Please keep your arms and um, time while the beautiful is stopped. <laughs> uh, Stephen is, is a wonderful VO artist. One voice he does particularly well is the voice of Rex Allen. And if you heard our carousel of our uh, imaginary entryway uh, two years ago, uh, that was uh, Stephen doing the voice of Rex Allen. I have to ask you, because that's such a iconic Disney voice. Was that one that just came naturally, or did you develop it after watching Disney movies all the years? Or well, I grew up in uh, part of Florida called Tampa, and uh, very close to Walt Disney World. So I think people talk a little bit like that down in that area, like I'm doing right now. Although I don't really talk like that very much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, and watching all the old uh, the nature films back in the day, you know, the Hound that thought he was a raccoon. And Charlie the Lonesome Cougar and uh, uh, Beaver, whatever, I don't know, Beaver meets the Cougar, and I don't know, there's all kinds of this. <laughs> kind of mash up there, but uh, yeah, so it came, it came a little bit natural just from living in that part of the country. And by the way, Stephen is the voice of the Mark Twain Streamboat, taken over from Pete, it's now the voice of Steve Stanton. Right, I'm hoping everybody doesn't fall overboard, no smoking or fires on the deck, and had all those rules on there. That's right. anybody. Falling in. That's right. How did you get your start in voiceover, Stephen? Boy, that's a long... Uh... <laughs> Tell us the 30-second version. <laughs> you know, I started just by, uh, I think I really got involved in doing voiceover just by, you know, listening to cartoons as a kid and imitating all the voices and then uh, working, you know, in animation studios and trying to, you know, volunteering anytime they needed a scratch track, which is a, a temporary track, you know, when they're going to lay something down later. And it just kind of evolved into that. Wow, that's great. Well, thank you. Good to have you here. Fabio Rodriguez. Yes, sir. So Fabio, as you, as you heard from him, he is the voice of the Hot Bell Club. That was mostly because I talked to because Perry Burton was locked in. Hang on one second. We'll let you get situated. Have your fan club sit down. Oh yeah, there you go. So Fabio, talk, talk, I want to talk to you about Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean because you do voices in both of those. Oh, uh, yes, it was a pleasure. Actually, I, I need to say something first and that is that uh, uh, my, uh, the reason why I started with Disney is because of the gentleman on the left, Mr. Bill Rogers. He, he discovered me. video for uh, Xerox and then uh, when I finished he was in the next door uh, he has a studio up there and he says uh, I heard your voice uh, doing that thing wouldn't you like to audition for a for a Disney uh, voice inside the park and I said are you kidding me and I got no so I go you bet and I did and then I got it so uh, what was the other question well, no. <laughs> I, just to, I just wanted to say that because He's not only my dear friend for at least 20 some years, well, a long time, but, uh, but also he's, he started actually. Well, he's amazing. I, yeah. I wanted, well, the question was about doing uh, Haunted Mansion and Pirates, but you were telling me a story about when you actually heard yourself for the first time in the park. Oh yeah, that, again, it involves Mr. Rogers because when I, my dream when I came to this country was to visit Disneyland. And uh, I finally realized my dream in 1972. I was standing by myself on Main Street, and there was the castle. And then at 9 o'clock, I, I heard a voice in English say, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just 15 minutes, and I go like, Holy moly, I love that voice. Someday, I'm going to be standing in this same place, and I'm going to be listening to that announcement but in my voice in Spanish. That was my dream and that was my goal. And, and here's the kicker. Exactly 30 years to the, almost to the date in 2002, I was standing in the same place 
but this time with my wife and my uh, youngest son, Alexander, <laughs> we're standing in the same place, and then we heard uh, Mr. Rogers first, and then I came, damas y caballeros, niños y niñas, and dentro de 15 minutos, and then my son, Alexander, who is here, he goes, Dad, that's you. And then, and then I go, yeah. And then a lot of people were, is that really you? And I go, yeah. And I go, yeah. So it was my uh, dream that became a reality. Wow. And I'm still in the park. Thank God. I and hope I will see you. We're lucky Thank to you. have you, Fabio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, well, anybody I mean, want a microphone? <laughs> no, no. Mark has his own. Pass that. Hello. Oh, yes. So Mark Silverman right there in the center, the voice of Rolex. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mark, Mark, uh, when did you, I have to ask you this, did you start off life sounding like Mark, uh, Rod Sterling, uh, Sterling, Rod Sterling, Rod Sterling, <laughs> or is it just something you developed? I did not. It, it was actually, um, a, it was sort of similar to my voice. It wasn't much of a stretch where I can just kind of go into it like this from my real voice. And it seems to come in handy all the time. <laughs> it comes in handy most, I, I, listen, I, after doing this Rod Sterling and Tower of Terror, Everywhere I go, it just seems to happen. I, I like to go to Target and go to the in the elevator. One of those elevator doors closed. About to ascend into the twins. People in the elevator, they they really don't know what to make of it. Some of them they don't want to look. They don't know, but it, it makes uh, it brings a little bit of Disney magic into everyone's life. Just shopping at Target, it's great. But, I never really did the Rod Sterling voice, but as a kid, I just, I watched a lot of TV, and I would, I was obsessed with TV and tape recorders, and I would tape, everything I would tape, I would just walk around the house, just like at 10 years old, going, leave it to Beaver, starring Barbara Billingsley, Hugh Beaumont, Tony Dove, and Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Would you believe I'm Maxwell Smalley to me in six of the Trump? The wonderful world of Disney. It's just everything I heard, I wanted to talk like. And I, I didn't know why. I just thought it might be fun someday. So I started imitating my teachers, which they didn't like. But I thought it would, everyone likes it except the teacher. That's what I thought was funny. And I just got into voiceover from that. Yeah. Chris Edgerly was the voice of Timothy Mouse, who just heard it a moment ago. Hey, Chris. Hello, Brian. Hello. Another baby on the way. Congratulations. Thank you. My five, wife's doing five, all the hard work. Well, five minutes <laughs> over. <laughs> so how did you end up getting into these kind of voices? Because you do such specific Disney voices. Right. Um, when I was growing up, I would go to the Hollywood Tower of Terror in uh, Orlando, and I would hear that that Rod Serling, and I would think, one day I'm going to grow up and I'm going to do the voice on that ride, and, <laughs> and that job went to Mark Silverman, so, uh, <laughs> fine, I'll do Timothy, great, I'll do him instead, so, yeah, I'll be and, fine. Uh, yeah, I, I was a stand-up comic for years, and I, like Mark, I would do voices as a kid and make my friends laugh and, you know, anything to get you out of uh, real work, you know, it just... And I gravitated into stand-up comedy. I did the road for about 10 years, and uh, I finally, I, I, uh, Pat Brady, my agent, and one of my agents, the reason I have a career, yeah. She, uh, she helped me get off uh, the road and just do voiceover full-time. And um, uh, one of the first jobs I remember getting was uh, to be uh, Timothy. So replacing somebody from 60 years ago, it was... It was kind of surreal. Wow. Like, yeah, I didn't think that I'd be able to connect with that, but I did. Do you ever stand outside the attraction and just mouth the words? <laughs> Until the court asks me not to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah stop yeah. doing that. Yeah, Chris Edgerly, everybody. Yeah. So, uh, Yenny Alvarez was sitting next to Chris right over there. Oh, and nice. Was, yeah, hello. She's the voice of Alice in Wonderland, but I have to tell you, uh, I, I made a list of all the voices that she does, so 
She does, uh, let's say, Flicks Flyers, Alice in Wonderland, Tuck and Rolls Driving Buggies, Jumpin' Jellyfish, The Parking Lot Trams, uh, The Tomorrowland Transit Authority in Florida, Studio Tram Tour in Florida, Gadget's Go Coaster, and It's a Small World. All one person. Wow. Oh, oh <laughs> So, Danny, how did you get your start in voiceover? Um, I think I'm a very lucky person. Um, I've, um, I've always been an actress and I love cartoons. When I was a little kid, I thought cartoons were real. Go figure. Um, and um, at one point, voiceover is a really large part of being an actor. And I wanted to get into animation, not only voiceover or radio commercials, but animations. And there was this casting director who was giving this phenomenal animation seminar at Walt Disney Imagineering. So it was a no-brainer for me. I was gonna get to be trained with this phenomenal casting director, Andrea Romano. She's done tons of things. And yay, somebody back there. And um, at Disney, and I walk in, we do everything, and Brian comes out and he says hello to everybody. In the meantime, my, um, my voiceover demo is playing in the background. And he looks at me and he says, um, that's great Spanish, you have a Disney voice. I didn't realize I had a Disney voice, but now I have a Disney voice. And he took my demo. From there, he called my agent and I auditioned. And the first time I walked into Walt Disney Imagineering, um, I remember, I hope I get It's a Small World. I hope I get It's a Small World. And I did. It was one of the first things I did about 12 years ago. Wow. So I'm responsible for your career. In a sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going to skip over Corey, because I don't think you're interested in him. Go, no? Oh, that would be too bad. Hey, Corey. No, oh, hello. I was going to skip over you, but I thought better of it. They're going to come and get me. How are you doing today? Well, I'm all right. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. We would have we would have missed you had you not been here. Yes. For those well, they few... tried to stop me. Well, they I had a fire I... on the freeway and uh, <laughs> closed off ramps and... Uh, well, I, I did put out those those thumbtacks. I'd hoped you'd run over, but you did. Um, so Corey is another one, uh, and everybody on this panel, by the way. I mean, I could not be here without them. But Corey, uh, I'm just going to read you. I, I can't read you everything I've that Corey does. Around around time. Time. There's not enough time. But I'm going to tell you that Corey does, uh, amongst other things, the uh, Mickey's Fun Wheel, Sim Silly Symphony Swings, It's Tough to Be a Bug, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, Indianapolis 500 Motor Speedway, The Parking Lot Trams, Grizzly Gulch, Tokyo Disney Seas, Mickey and the, Dis and the Sorcerer's Map, Downtown Disney Watercraft, Seven Doors, Mine Train, Mad Catter, Teacup, Switch Encounter. I can't read them all. There's not enough time. <laughs> and Corey is a one-man band here at Disney, and absolutely... isn't here, so I could say that. She'll never hear that I actually think so highly of you. Corey, could you please tell me, how did you get your start in voiceover? Well, my very first job was uh, for Disney. It was a school slide film. They were looking for the voice of Hans Conrad, who played Captain Hook for uh, the Peter Pan film. But uh, Hans Conrad was out of town. Now, the great voice actor, Dawes Butler, who I happen to know, knew that I did a very good likeness of Hans Conrad's voice. He had me audition for this slide film, and uh, in, what was it, 74? <laughs> yes. I played Professor Plumbotter <laughs> in Chef Omelette's Health Diet. <laughs> and now, you know, 40 years later, I'm still doing Hans Conrad's voice for uh, Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I always wanted to be a voice actor, I, uh, and especially because of Disneyland. And it was Paul Fries uh, who sort of united me. voice from uh, the adventure through inner space and uh, then finally when the haunted mansion opened I walked in the door and heard that voice I said ah, okay I have to meet this man and I want to work with him <laughs> I want to do that 
And I set out to do it and never took no for an answer, even though I'm, uh, you know, uh, painfully uh, uh, shy and dyslexic and <laughs> Asperger's. <laughs> Well, you know, while you were out, we played a little clip from the Nightmare of a Christmas Holiday Overlay for Haunted Mansion. And uh, I think that he is a pretty darn good ghost host, don't you? Yeah. I know, I know, I know, but still, yeah, it's... You know, thanks to uh, everyone involved, and Bill yeah. especially, and... Uh, well, you know, they just wove this illusion together with great engineering. Yep. My well, little, my little simulation. Well, we've got it here only in California. Nobody else gets that one. It's <laughs> ours, right? <laughs> so Camille Dixon is sitting. Oh, excuse me, Camille. So, do you have a mic? Camille Dixon. <laughs> Uh, Mark will be right back. <laughs> Twilight's going to drive to Mark back, back so he has to go do it live. <laughs> really lock the door. Uh, Camille Dixon at the other end of the panel. Uh, Camille is most of the voices you hear at California Adventure. Can you tell me, how did that end in your lap? Well, like Fabio, I need to thank Bill Rogers for that, but maybe for different reasons. Um, no, uh, Bill had, he and I had worked together starting about 10 or 12 years ago, we're not sure, and when they were looking for a voice to do a couple of other things, like fill in for the performing arts showcase at the Hollywood Backlot stage, you know, the backup for the lady who was doing that, um, he suggested that they audition me, so I got the opportunity to do that. And then, as many of you know, for the last several years, Bill has also been the voice at Disney California Adventure. Then last year, about a week before the opening of Cars Land and Buena Vista Street, we had it on the calendar, expecting that Bill would be there for the press events. He gets a phone call saying, you know how we're opening Cars Land and Buena Vista Street next week? Yeah, yeah, I got it on the calendar, but you know, when do you need me? What time? Where should I be? What's Camille doing? <laughs> so in one phone call, he's been replaced, and he is now my assistant. <laughs> and he is also my loving husband, so he could not be more supportive. take that very well, but he was very excited. Wonderful. Thank you, Camille. That's great. So, Bill, what did we talk about, what did we talk about last time? We know. How did you get started in this business? Thirteen years old, wanting to be a disc jockey. Wanted to play that rock and roll music on the radio. And when I found out that you could make commercials and play rock and roll music at the same time, I was hooked. That's all there was to it. And, you know, it really has been a whole lot of fun. I think last year we talked about how I got this gig, and I will just very quickly relate it to you that a great friend of mine recommended me for the role, asked me to come in and audition under strange auspices. I didn't know I was auditioning for anything. Uh, the person who auditioned me for the role, after a couple of takes, said, we think you're going to be the right guy. And it was all over with, and I went, how did this happen? But it was all due to an incredibly good friend, and uh, I have tried to pay it forward whenever possible. Which you apparently have. Thank you, Bob. 